I just got this through today. This is a dentist that liked me just to map out a design for this because on my on these various patterns of tooth loss that I have um, on here, there's nothing that fully corresponds with that. And this is a really good point actually. The um, there are so many combinations of missing teeth you can't really cover every single base with a protocols like this so um, so that's why when I'm doing treating my own patients I always design it individually even though it may correspond exactly to a design that I have on this universal design sheet there because there are subtle things that need to do which are relevant to each single case so first of all what I do is I'm going to just colour in the missing teeth so we've got um, two centrals here and a lateral incisor. So we've got a missing canine just there and tooth there. So I get asked this a lot where dentists contact me and want me to help them with designing these sorts of cases which I'm really totally happy to do. I charge for that, so I have a fee which is on my website under mentoring. If you look at mentoring, there'll be my current fee on there to do that per, per hour. And I can do that via Zoom, face to face, or just get on and design and the like this so now because I don't have an opposing model I'm not sure what teeth we've got um, at the bottom here so I'm just gonna have to guess at this point so if for instance the patient has a full complement of lower teeth I might need to put a tooth on just there as well so I'm just gonna just assume because quite often the patient in the lower arch has um, a full complement of teeth there, so I'm just going to assume that that's present there, so like that. Now, so we've got this is the um, two molars just there, like that. So this is what I do first of all: I just colour in what teeth are missing, and then what I'm going to do is to put on um, the saddle. So I want to replace the gum work on this area here, like this and then also all the way around the back here. Whilst I'm doing this, I'm just even starting to think about how retention and how we're gonna keep this denture in place. So, and also I'm just wanting to keep everything beautifully away from all of the gingival margins. You see, so we've got the two um, saddles just there. Now, in terms of support, what am I going to do? I'm going to use these two teeth here as support. Looks like there's something going on there on that crown, maybe a little bit of a chip or something. But this can all be covered and used for um, the partial denture support area. So I'm going to just bring that over there like this. The nice support areas there like that. And just there so and then the these have got crowns on there so a little bit of smoothing of these areas they just create flat edges ledges over on which the denture can be supported uh, this is going to be metal on here nice positive rest like that around the back edge just around there, and I'm going to use that as a as retention just here. Now, ideally, I'd like to use that as a tooth for a clasp on there. Normally, I'm looking at two clasps per denture. In this case, I may elect to do an, some more on it, just purely because we've got this big, massive free end saddle just up here. But let's just connect this up first and do full support from the palate so this is going to come down so this is the midline here 
So I can just sweep that like that and then bring that all the way back to there like so. So that's one way of doing it here where we're keeping it you know, totally clear of those gingival margins and then we can just do a complete denture in the future. If we think that this is going to com be converted totally into complete denture, should these teeth be lost in the future, then a post dam could be added on instead, an acrylic post dam just across the back here. And then we'd then bring that up and contact these two teeth here and just compromise the coverage of the gingival margins in that case. But I'm going to keep it all bare and all clear like this. So. It, should that tooth fail, it can be added on to the two dentures. Should that tooth fail, then that can be added on to. But then, you know, further on, if we lose all of them, it will be start again, make a new denture completely. So now at the front here, I don't have any sort of visual on how this looks from a smile line perspective. So if this patient had a low smile line, I would be looking to bring a little gold clasp across the front here like that, like that there, and then using that to retain it there. So we've got a clasp there and a clasp there. We can also bring another clasp on here like this if we needed it. So that would be possible spare clasp there, like that. So, um, but that only, that's just optional. This is a definite, if we can use that, then that'd be brilliant. So low smile line. We can use a gold clasp, just there. High smile line. Use a shell clasp. Okay, so, and you can look at a shell clasp on one of my case presentations is named Zephyrin. And uh, Zephyrin had a denture with a shell, full shell clasp. It's made of acetal resin. And she is, and I'll just look it up now on the, on the web. It's, I think she's about case number 51. If I go to case studies, just looking that up now if you don't. If you just bear with me. So that's on case number 55. You'll be able to see a full shell clasp example there. So that's if, so low smile line, gold clasp, high smile line, shell clasp, which covers that completely. So I'm just gonna just do this little section here, the side views now, so you can get a good idea of what the thing's gonna look like from the side too. So, so that's all the missing teeth. Just like I mentioned there, if the patient's got a lower tooth there, then I would put one on the denture. If not, I wouldn't bother. Sometimes it's really tight for space here too. Maybe the over -rupted tooth might put a little metal stop there on the denture itself. So it's just very much dependent upon what's going on in the patient's mouth. I want to extend this all the way back like that. And then let's have a look on the other side before I colour everything in. So we've got one, two, and then it's three, three nice thin bit of pink there just keeping it away from the edges of the teeth so let's start to color everything in I will put the clasps on just in a second as well so that's the pink and like this that's really good You know, so I've done, all I've received is just this here. Once I, this is my prelim design. Um, once I've got the models, 
the casts, primary casts, this can be verified and any changes can then be made to that design as need be. So this whole denture would be, have a new occlusion completely on it. So we'd be opening the patient's bite up onto this. So these new rests on here would be part of that occlusion of the whole thing, everything be touching. So we can actually enlarge those rests if need be to uncover a little bit more of the occlusal surface. And this all allows the whole denture to become a splint and help to reduce the potential for fracturing and wear and cracking of the underlying teeth there. So this is fully extended around the back of the tuberosity there like this. All the way back. That's really good. This is a massive free end saddle. These sorts of dentures, they certainly don't hold any fear at all for me now through this design process and making them like this. We're utilizing the pallets as a fantastic support area, superb for the denture. So just coring that in like this. Like that. Really super cool. These are metal backings help to support the denture, it stays in place. It also, they will be areas where the lower teeth will bite onto these. Now these can be, these rests at the back here can be made bigger if need be for extra support there, should that be the case, like that. So let's have a look at our clasp design. So here, low smile line. You could bring a clasp across here like this. That would be a gold clasp. I'm going to colour that in. I've got a nice little gold pen here, Pentel. Gold pen to do that. It comes across there like that. The X is on the draw any drawings that I do, just there, here. That just means we've got a retention on those areas. So this here, we've got a clasp arm coming round here, engaging that mesio buckle undercut just on there. We could also have an optional clasp if need be, just coming off there like that. That could be a spare clasp, that would be um, gold, 0.9 millimeter there for that spare clasp. And then this is a wrought crown clasp, 0.9 millimeter just there. So that's your potential spare slash optional clasp, just in that position like that so that's pretty much our design sorted just to emphasize various things i just can use a, a black pen just to do adjustments so there so there are rests So that's the job done. Thank you.